YouTube.com. Home to billions of videos being shared around the world on any given second of any day. A place where one could start a channel and post or view anything. Cats? Sure. Video games? Sure. Vacation? Why are you watching this? What's the point? Why? Over the course of YouTube's multi-decade journey, there have been many different search terms that have caused controversy. Glitches within the YouTube algorithm that prompts unnerving and unsettling results. Playlists with seemingly no explanation and communities that would make almost everyone sick. What I'm about to show you are a collection of terms you should never search. Phrases that lead you to YouTube's darkest corners and some of the most unsettling rabbit holes that lie in the biggest video sharing service in the world. Although all entries will be adequately censored, this is your reminder that this video will explore some unsettling and disturbing topics. Viewer discretion is advised. Asuba Bawana was a search term most widely covered by YouTuber Gooseboofs, and actually featured a more wholesome explanation than most of the entries in this video. At least as wholesome as one could possibly get. Searching Asuba, or the full term Asuba Bawana, will lead you to a collection of gruesome and disturbing videos, usually featuring plenty of gore and body mutilation. The term itself was made popular in 2019, and after four years, although you can still find plenty of stomach-turning examples still available on YouTube, most of the popular search results have been removed, or replaced with memes joking on the previous results. Even the more disturbing search results nowadays typically date back only as far as 2019, making it more likely that all these videos are just imitations. However, before this, Asuba Bawana actually had meaning. See, four years ago, when searching Asuba, there was a large playlist with the title written in Senhala, the spoken language of the people of Sri Lanka. If you were to search Asuba Bawana today, you can still find a similar playlist, however it's not the same playlist that appeared in 2019. While both playlists feature disturbing and gruesome content, the one written in Senhala also included many Buddhist preachings and chants, leading us to a more deeper explanation on the origin of this unnerving search term. One common factor in most of these videos seems to be the inclusion of a dead body, whether this be somebody recently deceased or footage of an autopsy. In Gooseboos' research, he found two possible explanations for these terrifying results. Both are kind of understandable, as different cultures have different ways of dealing with death and healing. However, one is way more disturbing than the other. The better explanation is that these results are actually used as a method to respect the dead. Death around the world can often be vastly different than many Westerners are used to. In my culture, and likely yours included, death is something to be mourned and looked down upon. But in many other cultures, it's actually something that's respected and often even celebrated. Buddhism shares these kind of views towards death, and some even translated Asuba Bawana to the term positive meditation. Making the explanation for these gruesome videos more understandable to those not accustomed to other cultures' values. It's possible that this playlist was just a method of respecting the dead and the lives they lived, instead of being some byproduct of somebody's snuff fantasy. However, this explanation has a much darker, contradicting argument. It was noted that this playlist had an unusual amount of gore, almost filling the entirety of the playlist with the exception of only a few Buddhist chants and lectures. There was even some odd additions to the playlist that didn't quite align with the previous theory, one of which being the infamous YouTube creepy video that featured a deaf man kissing the corpse of his dead grandmother. A member of Gooseboos' community claiming to be familiar with Buddhist practices reached out and provided a different explanation to the term Asuba Bawana, saying it actually means to remove lustful thoughts from oneself, giving the purpose of this playlist an entirely different and unnerving meaning. What if this playlist was created as a method to remove a disturbing desire involving dead bodies? My mind is forced to immediately lean towards necrophilia, and this explanation would explain the overwhelming amount of dead bodies in various settings, as well as the very few Buddhist chants and meditation practices. If this be the case, it's unnerving to think that hidden in YouTube's algorithm lies a term that led to a community of individuals suffering from necrophilic desires, 
trying to rid themselves through Buddhist chants. Although I trusted Goose Bruce's research, I decided to reach out to a few members of the Buddhist Reddit community and see if they had any input on the subject. One agreed with the meditation practice to rid desires, even linking an article that featured a tragedy involving many Buddhists taking their own lives after participating in this particular meditation. Another member, however, actually gave an explanation that I like more than the other two. He believes that the term Asuba Bawana involves focusing on the impurity and unattractiveness of the body. This often involves corpses as a human body in a decaying state can be perceived as humans most unattractive point in life. The purpose of the meditation is actually to remove one's attachment to the body as some sort of beautiful object, instead glorifying death in a way to show what the body will one day eventually become. The Redditor claims that this practice does include lust, but also other things like admiring one's own bodily appearance saying that focusing on the process of death is a good way to stay mindful of the impermanence of our lives and even our bodies. Although we may look at playlists like this as disgusting and gruesome, it's always important to stay respectful of other cultural practices. I'm just relieved that Asuba Bawana has many understandable explanations. However, don't expect the same for the other entries in this list. Full stop punctuation is used to describe the search of any punctuation character, often resulting in a collection of videos with disturbing and unnerving thumbnails, such as the one shown here. To get a better understanding of what this whole thing actually is, we can use the Wayback Machine and actually see that this phenomenon seemed to gain popularity around 2015. However, at this time, full stop punctuation took a much different angle than it does now. See, back then, most of the results were still named full stop punctuation. However, most of the results usually featured weird and popular memes, such as the infamous Leroy Jenkins video and this odd looking dolphin. Jump to 2019 and you could see a shift towards Elsagate content. For those who aren't familiar, Elsagate references media targeted towards children with the aim to expose them to inappropriate content and imagery. I could go down a whole separate rabbit hole when it comes to Elsa Gate content. When I say inappropriate content, I don't mean a sex joke that should be rated PG-13. I mean Bugs Bunny having his entire torso removed from his body with his guts hanging out. It was really disgusting and gross and traumatized a large generation of children. This was a large problem for YouTube for quite some time, and still honestly currently is. However, luckily, full stop punctuation didn't gain too much ground in spreading this type of media. It wasn't until 2022 that search results appeared to shift directions yet again, this time towards disturbing and unnerving content. From then till today, users can still find a collection of disturbing videos when typing a single punctuation into the search bar. The thumbnails are usually gruesome, and many are often extracted from actual snuff pornography and disturbing media, such as screenshots from cartel beheadings and actual torture footage. The fascinating thing, however, is that some foundations are truly made of stone. See, back when this was first discovered, most people used full stop punctuation as a method to bypass YouTube's automated review system. By putting a full stop in a YouTube title, such as a period, followed by random emojis and special characters, those videos would be skipped over by YouTube's review process and essentially allow users to upload whatever they want. I found a Reddit post where users explained some of the results they found, and it's just beyond morbid and unsettling. I saw a cute cat girl get disemboweled with a knife. Last time, I saw a girl eating fried cat. I saw an anthropomorphic cat getting disemboweled. However, today, almost all the entries are entirely different. They still have some sort of terrifying NSFW thumbnail. However, usually clicking the video brings you to some sort of meme or fictional horror piece, weirdly comparable to a modern day horror-esque Rick Roll. It's actually kind of funny as often the comments on these videos play along with the joke providing satiric comments and ironic responses to the often weird videos they associate to. You can actually find similar results for many other search terms and combinations of emojis, however they all seem to have a similar story to the infamous full stop punctuation.
With the exception of a dark and twisted rabbit hole that occurred between 2015 and 2022, it really is beautiful to see a once meme-oriented YouTube troll come full circle in an entirely different format. It's still a creepy thing to search for, and I would recommend you proceed with caution as I do hear of disturbing videos popping up as a result. However, it should be much, much more tamer to take a look at for yourself than it was just a few years ago. Baby Monkey Hate is easily one of the most unnerving and stomach-turning entries in this video. Gaining popularity more than a decade ago, YouTube was once most notorious as a platform for sharing cute and innocent videos of animals. Cats in themselves have engraved themselves in internet history as a staple of the early 2000s. However, as YouTube began to shift as a more mainstream platform, other types of content began to gain popularity, including other forms of documentation surrounding animals. Turkey Tom actually did a great analysis about this rabbit hole and found that the surface level seemed to have started around the time that a certain video featuring a leopard catching a baby monkey gained popularity. The video in itself was uploaded with the purpose of documenting nature. Although sometimes sad, innocent and helpless animals dying to common predators is something that happens daily. Documenting even the hard to watch moments such as a baby monkey dying to a leopard is a way for humans to understand other aspects of the world outside our lives as evolved humans. Where this video truly becomes unbearable though is in the comment section. Although many sympathize with the baby monkey, some comments had a really disturbing outlook, seemingly getting off on the thrill of endangered animals. One user said, I don't like split screen. Too bad we didn't see him eating the monkey. While another user mocked those crying at the baby monkey's lost life. While there isn't anything too off-putting about this particular comment, it's eerie to see that it was actually posted to a playlist titled, Torture House Monkeys. While this specific playlist is no longer available, this era of the early 2010s seems to be the start of a really disturbing rabbit hole involving the torture of small animals more specifically, monkeys. Searching baby monkey hate, even today, will lead to a wild amount of disturbing playlists and videos featuring the death and torture of small monkeys. While the results have certainly gotten tamer over the years, you can still find plenty of playlists that still collect baby monkeys being locked away in cages and borderline tortured for the sake of human amusement. Some of the comments featured on a video about a baby monkey crying in a cage were, all that screaming translates to, feed me to a tiger. The more the little one screams and screams, the longer he has to stay in the cage, and there is nothing to eat and no bottle of milk. I wish they'd show the video of him slapping the shit out of it, after it bites him one more time. It's also common to find members of these communities referring to monkeys as rodents, tree devils, and other very negative nicknames to further reinforce their hatred towards the animal. I was just mildly curious at what makes someone attracted to such a disturbing act and landed on a small reddit AMA made by someone who claims to get off on the torture of innocent animals. When asked how he even began to like this fetish, he explained that he once got fed a clip on Facebook by an activist, showing the torture of a small animal as a method to combat animal abuse. The user claimed that he was initially deeply disturbed and disgusted, however got curious and decided to look further. He ended up stumbling across actual adult content featuring animal cruelty and for quite some time was deeply attracted to the fetish. It is sick to me to think that there is such a large community of disturbed individuals that just get off on the torture of small animals. However, what's honestly worse is how easily that this is available on one of the largest video sharing platforms in the world. It makes absolutely no sense that things as simple as a Netflix account take more steps to access than these playlists. And if a simple Facebook clip could influence one person's desires, it's not bizarre to think that these playlists on YouTube have been doing the same for quite some time. It's something that needs to be addressed, and I'm hoping this video can act as another small PSA in a larger battle against YouTube's community guidelines. Username 666 is the only fictional piece on this list, 
hence why I saved it for the end. However, it was the first ever disturbing type of search that made mainstream popularity, and at the time was actually treated as something that might be legit. To those just slightly more naive. On February 26th of 2008, a user named Nana825763 posted a video named username666 that acted as a creepypasta that took place on YouTube.com. The horror short featured a user trying to search for a channel named 666. However, the result was a suspended account. They continued to refresh the channel, and with each click, the YouTube webpage grew more and more corrupted and disturbing, eventually appearing as if the background was flesh and blood. The channel soon loads, and it was filled with disturbing imagery, some of which included unsettling shapes and animated fetuses with their heads spinning. Looking back on it now, this was so obviously just a YouTube troll, however back in 2008, it really wasn't so obvious. YouTube really didn't have an indie horror community, aside from screamers and let's plays to horror video games. Username 666 was one of the first of its kind, and with YouTube being relatively new, and the internet still being pretty weird, many people thought that this haunted channel named 666 was actually legit and searching for it enough times would lead users to the disturbing channel shown in the video. This might sound absolutely bizarre, but remember, there was a huge community dedicated to finding a character that didn't even exist in a video game almost a decade old. Sometimes odd things stick, and oddly enough, when odd things stick for so long, they might just become reality. In 2022, users discovered that if you deleted the H in the word watch on any YouTube link, you will be directed to a video posted by a channel named 666, featuring the same head-spitting fetuses described before. The reason for this was quickly debunked, and I actually have a whole video dedicated to the topic. This has since been fixed, and now just results in a boring 404 page, however it was cool to have one of the oldest urban legends in YouTube history have some reality, even if it was just for a brief moment. YouTube's a weird place, and a lot of weird things happen when you give anybody the ability to post anything. It's freeing in a way, don't get me wrong, but doing so allows the risk of disturbed and unwanted communities to engrave their place in its deepest corners. These have just been some of the more well-known search terms to reach those places. However, who knows what else lies out there, and what more is left to be discovered. If you found any weird search terms that intrigue you, Leave them in the comments below, and soon we may just explore them together. Thank you all for watching, and as always, enjoy the night.